Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. I'm Callie. I'm Bean. I'm Brittany. So today, um, happy Halloween, first off. Um, very excited. We all love Halloween. <laughs> we do. So, with it being Halloween, we decided to do our second book to movie review, which is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets by J.K. Rowling. So this this past month, we all read Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, and then we watched the movie together. So, overall thoughts for major issues... We all kind of agreed that this is probably the best book to movie adaptation of Very the entire series. Much. Very much so. There was one major scene that was left out, which we really disliked, and that was Sir Nicholas de Mimsy Puppy's death day party. I feel, do feel that the way that they went around it did make sense, but it still would have been nice to kind of get that mm -hmm. aspect of it. Mm -hmm. There would have been more ghosts. Um, that would have been our first introduction to Moaning Myrtle. Um, the headless hunt. The headless hunt. We, we peeves. Pe mm -hmm. peeves. Peeves. <laughs> this one, I just feel like this kind of helped propel the actual plot of the story, and I don't know. I just think that a room full of ghosts and actually seeing how the trio interacted with the ghosts and the rotting food and all of that <laughs> would have been just really entertaining. Mm -hmm. I assume they cut it because. Um, CGI wasn't where it is today in 2001, I think is when this movie was filmed. It would have been very expensive for them to figure out how to do that. Right. So, too, so. I understand why it wasn't done, but I still think it would have been a really fun scene. Mm -hmm. I think also it was just the way that the trio left the party and how it was the first introduction to the um, basilisk and the pipes. Um, we kind of missed that interaction. It was mostly just Harry. And then we missed the line where Ron says, you know, hearing voices is just as bad in our world as it is in humans, like the muggle world. So we just kind of missed that aspect. Because that's just kind of with Hermione saying it, it's, it's like, oh, yeah, but at the same time, not to be mean, how would she know? in the wizarding world that it's just as bad to hear voices right. so that's kind of why we i missed ron's so i guess the next part we typically talk about casting and our opinions on that there aren't a lot of characters that are added in this book there's a couple but four. yes there are four major characters added gildory lockhart is our big one which was perfectly done mm -hmm. a plus to casting a plus. that was wonderful it was it he did. i think he left out enough of one some of gilderoy's stuff mm -hmm. that he wasn't because i remember just even reading the book anytime gilderoy lockhart opened his mouth i just rolled my eyes <laughs> yep. so yep. hard <laughs> yep and i have to give a shout out because i did listen to the audiobook for mm -hmm. part of it mm -hmm. and jim dale just did an amazing job with it it's he just did. like Oh my god, I'm fighting so annoying now. <laughs> yes, so you get that annoyance. So I think the actor found a good balance where we didn't necessarily hate him on screen, but we still got that pompous, annoying character that um, does happen in the book. And we still got that the rest of the professors weren't big fans of him. <laughs> yeah. And the boys were not big fans of it. Yep, yep. <laughs> so the next big one, the next two big ones are dads, and that is Lucius Malfoy and Arthur Weasley, who are introduced in this film. Um, and again, A+. plus. Wonderful casting there. Oh, Even yeah. their, especially their interaction together. Yes. Mm -hmm. That was something we, we did talk about briefly, is um, the fact that in the book, they get into an actual fist fight. Whereas in the movie, it's more, it's calmer, but it's still that Very tense. super tense, yeah, it's super tense atmosphere. It's that, that dad aspect. standoff where it is. it's kind of like one thinks that they're better than the other and vice versa, but they're, they both have their flaws, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. one is just evil. <laughs> Looking at you, Lucius Malfoy. Looking at you, bud. But... Um, I think that both of these actors brought a whole new dimension to these characters. Mm -hmm. They were so well portrayed. Um, they are exactly how I envisioned them oh, in yeah. the book. They were so well done. I think Jason Isaacs as Lucius Malfoy just brought this whole new mm -hmm. form of just, I don't even know, <laughs> don't even know like ass-hattedness. I think Jason Isaac did a really great job at portraying this really evil, we kind of get a sense as to where Malfoy gets it mm -hmm, from, mm -hmm. why Malfoy acts the way he does, because he has this just 
evil, mean dad. Mm -hmm. Um, Whereas with the opposite, with Arthur Weasley, he is portrayed so loving (laughs) and caring and almost thought Harry was his own child. (laughs) And it was glorious. (laughs) You had to do a head count quick. (laughs) And what is the function of a rubber duck? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the last casting that we have is Colin Creevy, which (laughs) he... (laughs) It was exactly how I imagined it was this cute. annoying little eleven-year-old kid yeah, with a camera. With a camera, like I like that they gave him like an old-fashioned camera. Well, not old-fashioned, but like one of the cameras with the huge flashes. Yes, the little flash bulb <laughs> was great. <laughs> so it was just more obnoxious. I do wish that we saw we see Colin in the later movies. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, we do not. This is, I think, the only movie where we see him. Mm-hmm. But or he has like a role really in the movie. That he has a line or any sermon. Mm-hmm. I think he's in the background in a couple of the later yeah. movies, but that's it. Whereas in the books, we do get more Colin. Um, we meet his brother, and there's a lot of other aspects of the Creevy clan. So, <laughs> so um, those are the four major castings that were added and characters that were added to mm-hmm. the story from book two. And I guess the, the other, like, aspect about this film were very minor details mm-hmm. that they switched, which even then the switchings made sense. Mm-hmm. And they worked. They, they really, for the most part, we didn't have anything that we disliked from this movie. A lot of the things um, that, like, we found issue with are things that the characters did in both the movie and the book. And you're like, you are 12. And stupid. You did not think. And stupid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And so that's more, I think that's more what we kind of complained about, if you complained about it, is the fact that they were stupid. One minor change that I picked up pretty much right away um, was Professor Binns versus Professor McGonagall teaching the kids about the Chamber of Secrets. Um, Totally understand why they changed it. It would have been, you know, again, going back to the ghosts, um, CGIing a whole new scene, a character, um, and introducing a new character, because they don't really discuss, you know, history of magic, Mm -hmm. and it kind of goes back. I know we briefly discussed it in the first one, how you don't see a lot of the school aspect in the Mm -hmm. movies, which... Especially with history. I know I like history, mm-hmm. but it's not for everybody. It's no. not everyone's <laughs> favorite. So it's really hard to portray that in a movie with the um, classroom setting. So I can understand mm-hmm. why they um, switch it to Professor McGonagall. And when you're watching the movie, that is one professor that you know you can trust no matter what. Yeah. Is mm-hmm. Professor mm-hmm. McGonagall. And um, she's been around the school. She knows. And she's a head of house. So it makes sense why the, prof- pro- uh, why the producers were like... Let's do this instead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's just one thing that I really picked up on, and I didn't really mind it. Um, there's a lot of the minor things, like we said, that, you know, they changed, and it was like, oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, little little changes. I will say this movie, I don't know how much ad-libbing were in any of the other movies, mm-hmm. but I know that there is a ton of ad-libbing and improvisations that actually made it to Amazing. final film. There are two major ones. Yeah. Yes. The one both by the Malfoys, by both the way. Both by the Malfoy. Yeah. Fun fact. So the first one being Draco when he asks if Goyle can read when it's actually Harry. You know you and he left read. his when he left his glasses <laughs> on. And that was hundred percent Tom Felton forgetting his line. And Which is it's amazing. glorious. Oh, it's fantastic. So well done. And the other one was Lucius Malfoy asking Harry if he will always be around to save the day. And Daniel Radcliffe just on the spot was like, Don't worry. I will be. It's like, <laughs> dang. Like, wasn't even prepared for that amazing mm-hmm. scene. Yes. So, I will say, I do like a lot of the ad-libbing. I love it when that's sort of told after the film and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a lot of great lines in this movie, I think. Like, oh, yeah. they changed Ron's famous line, why couldn't it be follow, follow the, the butterflies? butterflies? <laughs> wasn't in the book. No. Nope. And should have been. Because yeah. that was amazing. Very or when so. Hagrid gets out of Azkaban, I'll kill him. Like, there were so many great lines in this movie. So, I guess the only other... I get yeah. I, the only real other thing that we did notice was left out. Does isn't a big part of it, but as we were thinking about it, they never talk about the idea of a squib in any of these movies. Mm-hmm. And the first time it's brought up is in Chamber of Secrets, where Harry's in Filch's office and finds out that Filch is a squib. And so it's just never really mentioned at all in the movie, never brought up. 
and I don't know, it's, you're not missing a lot, but I, I do it's feel like that's something that would have been. It expands upon the world. It does. Yes. It's just something that could have been there, but didn't need to be there. And I understand completely why it wasn't. Well, and I believe we did decide that there was a deleted scene with the quick spell. Because I know we couldn't find it. Explained or anything. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. But it just says quick spell on it. And they just okay. threw that in there. I guess just me personally, this is my least favorite book in this series. That being said, I gave it 4.5 4. out of 5. I enjoy it, but it just, for me, it's kind of just there. I don't really get much of the plot. I don't really, it just kind of almost was boring to me at points, which is really unfortunate. It's a lot of building up until the last like two chapters. And then everything happens. Everything happens in the last two chapters. And I I kind of, especially the first time that I read this, because I was one of those kids that I read as it was coming out and I was like 10 years old. I do feel like this is the world building book. It is. And like looking back on it now, I am enjoying it more because I understand that part. But the eight year old in me did not understand that part. (laughs) So... Yes, I guess that would be my only thing with this book. It just world building book. It is lots of world building. We get kind of more of like what wizarding life outside of Hogwarts is like, which is really crucial later. We get um, the Ministry of Magic a little bit in there too. We do um, um, some of the laws. Uh, you were seen becomes a thing. Like yeah, the statute of secrecy. Yeah, going off the world building. Um, one thing that we didn't really talk about was when the Malfoys are in Diagon Alley. Uh, when Harry missed his <laughs> fireplace and ends up um, at the shop and he has to kind of hide in the closet a little bit um, to watch the Malfoys kind of have that interaction of um, Lucius selling some things in his manner that he no longer wants. And you kind of see a little bit behind the scenes of what the Malfoys are like outside of the interactions with other people that they despise, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's also, if I'm correct, where we actually get the vanishing cupboard. We do. um, That comes into play later in the series. So there's a lot of little things that J.K. Rowling kind of introduced there is a lot of, East, lot of Easter eggs that you mm-hmm. don't notice yeah. until you've reread the whole mm-hmm. series, which is always really fun to see. It is, especially going back yeah. and being like, oh, I know where that comes yeah. in later. Hey, that's important. Especially <laughs> for me, because I actually watched all the movies first. This is my first reread of the series. I've actually never finished the whole series. Um, <laughs> that's about to change. That's don't about worry, to change. we're going to fix that. <laughs> so yeah, that, it's kind of re- interesting for me to reread it and be like, oh, that's right. Look at all these little things um, that maybe have been missed um, throughout the years. So I think that is all we have for this book to movie adaptation. Can you go with anything else? I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Um, so our next one is going to be Prisoner of Azkaban, also by J.K. Rowling, which we will be doing in December for Book Miss. So you can look out for that coming in December. So I believe that is my it. Favorite. That one's also my favorite. <laughs> It's not her favorite, but it's, it's our second, favorite. It's my second favorite. <laughs> so feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. We post videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. And if you want to be reminded whenever we post these videos, feel free to hit the little bell icon down below. And be sure to follow us on Instagram. Our joint and individual handles will be below, as well as our Goodreads accounts. And we will see you guys in our next one. Bye! Bye.